The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Now we'll begin here with the anatomy of the eye and then we'll uh, take what we learn with refraction and image formation to explain the optics of the eye. From there, we'll take a look at common vision disorders and solutions to correct those common vi vision disorders. Let's begin here with figure 21. Now, looking here, firstly, let's lay out the overall pathway to the brain. As light enters the eye, it passes through the cornea, the aqueous humor, the lens and the vitreous humor to form a real image on the retina where special cells that being rods and cones produce electrochemical signals that carry visual information to the brain through the optic nerve. Now, at the bottom here, we have the cornea, the aqueous humor, the lens, and the vitreous humor. They're all transparent, which allow the light to pass unobstructedly from the exterior through the eyeball and onto the retina. Next, let's review each of these main optical components in a bit more detail using the interactive module as it will help with our understanding. Firstly, the cornea contains no blood vessels and is slightly convex at the center of the eye. Its curve helps focus light onto the retina. As a matter of fact, most refraction actually takes place at the cornea air interface where the change in the index of refraction is the greatest. If we just zoom in a bit here, note that the cornea also has a protective role as it covers the iris and the pupil. And the pupil is simply the hole or uh, opening in the center of the iris. Moreover, the cornea is continuous with the sclera, which is the white of the eye. And muscles that are attached to the sclera control eye movements. Next, let's zoom in a bit and take a look at the aqueous humor. The aqueous humor is a watery fluid that not only fills the space between the cornea and the lens, it also provides nourishment to the cornea and lens. To be more specific, it's found in the anterior cavity, which has two chambers. The anterior chamber, which is between the cornea, the anterior chamber right here, which is between the cornea and the iris, and the posterior chamber, which lies behind the iris and in front of the lens and these zonal fibers that we'll, talk, uh, that we'll take a look at in just a moment. Next, let's discuss the iris. And for that, let's just zoom in a bit here. As you know, the iris is the colored portion of the eye and is suspended between the cornea and the lens. The iris contains pigmented epithelium, which accounts for its color. Eyes are blue, as you see here, when the number of melanocytes is less, and eyes will be dark when the number of melanocytes is greater. And the primary function of the iris is to regulate the amount of light entering the eye through the pupil, which, as you stated uh, just a moment ago, is the hole or opening in the center of the uh, iris. Now. Let's go back to figure 21 for a moment and contrast how the iris adjusts incoming light in bright conditions compared to dimmer conditions. Okay, if we come back here now, let's take a moment and we'll, we'll begin here with figure 22. Let's take a look at the iris adjusting the pupil. The pupil is simply the black portion in the middle of the eye and the iris is the colored portion of the eye. Now, if we take a look here, when it's brighter, the opening becomes narrower, which limits the amount of light that enters the eye. Conversely, looking to the right here, in dimmer lighting conditions, the iris adjusts to maximize the opening, which increases the amount of light entering the eye. Now, let me ask you, coming up here, why does the pupil appear black? That's because you're viewing the back of the eye, which is heavily pigmented, that being the retina and choroid. Now, if we come down here, if that's the case, then why does a person's eye appear red in a picture? When a bright light is directed into the pupil, the reflected light is red due to the blood vessels found on the surface of the retina. And the sketch here in figure 23b depicts a light beam striking the surface of the retina, allowing us to see the blood vessels.
Okay, let's get back to the interactive module and finish discussing the lens and vitreous humor and then the retina. Here's where we left off. We see that the lens also lacks blood vessels and furthermore is made up of protein called crystallins, which are arranged like the layers of an onion and that's why some textbooks call it the crystalline uh, lens. Now, the lens is held in place by these encircling zonal fibers that are depicted in white here, as you see, and they're attached to the ciliary processes. Moreover, for us humans to focus, the shape of the lens is uh, going to be altered by the surrounding ciliary muscles, and depending on what's needed, the ciliary muscles can contract or relax to adjust the lens shape, which in turn helps us focus images on the uh, retina to facilitate clear uh, vision. And shortly we'll talk more about adjusting the lens which is known as accommodation. Next, let's finish up by taking a look at the vitreous humor and we'll just zoom out a bit here for that. The vitreous humor is found in the uh, vitreous chamber which is this large posterior cavity behind the, uh, the lens. The vitreous humor also constitutes most of the volume of the eye. It's simply just the uh, jelly-like substance that contributes to uh, interocular pressure. And if we take a closer look here, it holds the retina against the choroid so that the retina provides an even surface for the reception of clear images. Let's go back to our lecture and take a deeper look at the retina now. Okay, we left off here at figure 23b. Let's proceed now to our next slide where we can examine the retina. And we'll begin here with figure 24. 